Let's continue. Which equation is correctly balanced? Well, all we have to do is go through and count the number of atoms of each kind on each side of the equation. We have one calcium atom here and one calcium atom here, so we're good. Here we have one oxygen plus two times one, two more, so that's a total of three oxygens on this side. But we only have two here, so it can't be this one. If we move on to this one, we can look and see that we have one calcium atom on this side, but we have three calcium atoms on this side, so immediately we can strike this. Here we have a copper atom on the left hand side and one on the right hand side, looking good so far. We have two hydrogens on this side and two on this side, still good. But we have four oxygens here and four plus two more over here. And we also have one sulfur, a sulfur, and a sulfur here, so it can't be this one. It must be this one, but let's check anyway. One nitrogen and one nitrogen. We have three hydrogens here, and on the other side we have one hydrogen plus two more in the water. So we're still looking good. Here we have two oxygen and uh, two of each in the molecule, so two times two is four. We have three plus one is four, so D must be our correct answer. Here we have an unbalanced chemical equation. It's a double displacement reaction. We just need to balance the equation. So we start on the left hand side. One iron, one iron. Two chlorines. Only one chlorine on this side. So we're going to have to double this. Come over here. Now we have two sodiums on this side and two times one is two on this side. And the last thing we balance is this carbonate. There's a CO3 on that side and a CO3 on that side, so we're done. It was just this simple. The question says, what is the coefficient for NaCl? We see up here that it is 2, so the answer is G. Number 13 says, living plants perform photosynthesis according to this reaction. Carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light yields glucose and oxygen. What remains the same throughout the photosynthetic process? The types of atoms, the types of molecules, the arrangement of chemical bonds, and the amount of energy stored in the molecules. This is actually sixth grade or seventh grade. The energy that's stored in the molecules can't be the same. We know that glucose is an energy molecule. The arrangement of chemical bonds, well, we have different chemicals, so it can't be that one the types of molecules present, again, different chemicals. The types of atoms must be the correct answer, and this is based on just the law of conservation. We have carbon atoms on the left and the right, hydrogen atoms on the left and the right, and oxygen atoms on the left and on the right. Number 14 says, the diagram below shows the Lewis dot structure for different elements. We have boron, carbon, nitrogen, and fluorine. The electron configuration of an unknown element is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Which of the following represents its dot structure? Well, s and p are the first two columns and the last six columns of the periodic table. s and p. We look at these two and these three. We add them together and we get five. So there are five electrons in the outer energy level. We know it's the outer energy level because it's two here. One is the energy, inner, inner energy level, which holds two. So the outer energy level has got five. So our Lewis dot structure for this unknown element would be something like this. with five dots. Where do we see something like this? We see it for nitrogen, which is number three, H. What is the correct name for the compound with the formula NH4NO2? On our periodic table on the back side, 
we find that there are polyatomic ions. This first one is called ammonium. So we can get rid of these two that say ammonia. Then we have to find NO2. There's sometimes confusion because NO2 and NO3 sound very similar. NO3 is nitrate, but NO2, what they've given us here, is nitrite. Ammonium nitrite is the correct answer. Which of the following is the scientific name for LiCl? According to our rules, for a metal and a nonmetal, it's a binary ionic compound. We name the metal lithium, so we can get rid of these two. And then we name the nonmetal, changing the ending to IDE. So H must be the correct answer. What is the correct formula for sodium acetate? Okay, Sodium is a metal, acetate is a polyatomic ion. The first thing that we need to do is write sodium, Na. Then we need to look up acetate on our periodic table. If we look up acetate on the back of our periodic table in the polyatomic ion section, we'll see that it's C2H3O2. This must be it. It's the only one that fits. What is the correct formula for ammonium carbonate? Again, we have polyatomic ions. Ammonium is NH4. Carbonate is CO3. What we have to do is check the charges. We find that ammonium carbonate is negative 2, and, or pardon me, carbonate is negative 2, and ammonium is plus 1. So we have to crisscross. We take this 2 and we'll put it down here after putting the NH4 in parentheses. So NH42CO3 is the correct answer. That's G. Which formula represents copper 1 oxide? They've told us that the charge is plus 1. We know that oxygen always has a minus 2 charge. So we have to crisscross. Our 1 would go down here if we wrote 1's. And our 2 goes here. So Cu2O is the correct answer. There we go. Number 20 says, which electron dot structure is correct for CO2? We know that carbon typically has four, oxy or four electrons around it, and oxygen typically has six. So if we look, we can make sure that, that these have uh, the total number of electrons that we need. First, let's get rid of some of the ones that are obviously wrong. This one here has a free electron in several places, as does this one and this one. Oh, actually, this one doesn't. I take that back. That's a pair. But this one has free electrons. So we'll get rid of this. This one has a free electron over here, so we'll get rid of this. So that leaves these two remaining. Now we just have to look at the rules, the octet rule. Which says that every atom is going to want to have eight electrons surrounding it. If we look at carbon over here, it thinks that it has eight. But oxygen only thinks that it has six. So this can't be correct. Must be this one. This oxygen thinks that it has eight. This oxygen thinks that it has eight. And carbon here also thinks that it has eight. These two pair of dots here and here represent a double bond. This is the correct answer.